Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the F-15E Strike Eagle and we're looking at TEWS Tactical Electronic Warfare System is an integrated defensive suite which consists of four important subsystems. One, an ANALR-56 radar warning receiver. This listens for hostile radar sources. An ANALQ-135 internal countermeasure set. This is a jammer. An ANALQ-128 electronic warfare warning set. Listens for other incoming threats. And an ANALE-45 countermeasures dispensing set. Shaft and flare dispenser. We're doing these all in one video because in the Strike Eagle all four systems are linked together under TUES. Important point. When filming this at early access, a lot of this isn't modelled yet. So we're just going to show what's in and modelled at the moment. So we're going to start in the front cockpit. Now we're going to spend most of our time in the rear cockpit. This is mainly the domain of the WIZO. So I'm going to go to autopilot, altitude hold, and we have altitude hold on. Next, let's go back to the rear cockpit by pressing 2. We have three areas of interest. Our EW panel here. Two panels on the back right here. Tues and countermeasure dispenser. And either of our four screens. I'll use this MPD here. EW panel. Currently, none of these switches are modelled, but two of them will be. First, radar warning receiver and ICS. ICS is the jammer. Do we want it on combat or training? It's not functional, but for the time being, we best get used to turning it to combat. Next, pods is not modelled, and we don't think that ever will be modelled, so you can ignore that. Next, ICS or jammer, on standby, auto or manual. Although it's not modelled at the moment, it may be worth getting used to setting that in whichever mode you want. Next, we've got over here the TUES panel, where we have information about the jammer, the EWWS and the RWR. Power for the ICS, the jammer, on here. This guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy are not modelled, and we don't think they ever will be modelled. Power for the EWWS, on. Power for the RWR, also, on. Next, our countermeasure dispensing set, our chaff and flare. At this point, I should show how to dispense the chaff and flare. We can do it from front or rear cockpit and something important I've missed you don't have to go into the rear seat to activate all these switches they are actually bindable from the front seat so you can do this all from the front seat two commands we're interested in countermeasure dispense switch down manual one release and up manual two release down releases program one up releases program two with that in mind here is our operations mode knob it can be an off standby Manual only, which means that we can only use the chaff and flare programs 1 and 2 with the controls we've just shown. Semi-auto. This means the type of program to be fired, and we'll talk about programs in a minute, will be decided by the RWR, but we still trigger them ourselves. We still fire them with our up and down buttons. Auto means that, again, the RWR will choose the most suitable program for us and it will fire them automatically. Beware. Auto is useful because it means you don't have to worry about it, but it can burn through your countermeasures very quickly. We have a very finite amount of countermeasures we can take in the aircraft, and I'll show a screenshot from the Mission Editor loadout screen showing how we can set our quantity of chaff and flare. Next, a three-way switch, our chaff and flare selection switch. It can be in both, or it can be in chaff, or it can be in flare. Depending which option we have set here, either being in chaff or flare will help select which program is to be selected. Note, at the moment, unlike some aircraft, we have no ability to manually override and send just one chaff or one flare out. We can only fire programs of chaff and flare. Next, we have our flare jettison, which we may have to do in case of a fuel leak or an emergency landing, where we open that, we push that switch, and it will jettison all of our flares. Probably not a good idea. Before I forget, I should also mention that the rear cockpit has controls to trigger the countermeasure programs. Left-hand controller, CMD switch down, 
and up. Next, we're going to look at the choose display. The choose display can be used on any of the MPD or MPCDs, front or rear. Let's do rear. So it's already up here, but let's just do it again. Menu, choose. Let's focus on here. This screen handles all four elements of our choose our radar warning receiver, our jammer, our EWWS, and our countermeasures. We are in the center, our own ship, facing that direction. The arrow is our nav pointer, pointing to our currently selected sequence point. Around the outside is, of course, our compass rose with 12 pointed dots for the o'clock positions. Now, the top left here is our ICS status, but currently not modelled. We're not actually sure on the status of the jammer in the aircraft at the moment, but I would assume it's simply not modelled at the moment. We have a declutter function here where we can remove the compass rose. Next, where it says auto is currently not modelled. It doesn't actually do anything. We have our TACAN data block here from the HSI. Here we have our NAV data block again from the HSI. M takes us back to the main menu. RCD not functional. Global is our missionized pre-flight message. It has three options. Global, which prioritizes ground and air contacts, or we can change it to WFO, which prioritizes air contacts, or air ground, which prioritizes ground targets. This next push button is interesting. Currently not functional, but this is where we will be able to set our programs up for our chaff and flare. So a program of chaff and flare means that at a push of one button or automated, a series of chaff and flare, different quantities, different mixes, and at different intervals will be sent out. According to the documentation, this is where it will be set up. So we'll revisit that later when it's populated. We have our current amount of chaff and flare packages remaining. And finally, we have our RWR symbology. On the map, you can see we are there facing east. Ahead of us, about 80 miles, is an Su-27. Here is a Slava-class cruiser. And here is an SA-6 SAM. And we are straying into his area. The two screen via the RWR will give us visual symbology and audio warnings about those threats. It'll tell us when they're searching us, when they're locking us, and when they're firing at us. We can see the flanker. SB means an Eastern Block Radar, which means it could be a MiG-29, it could be a flanker variant. The N3 is the code for the Slava-class cruiser. We can see airborne targets have this kind of chevron hat. Seaborne targets have this kind of small boat symbol. The SA-6 shows as a 6, and I will quickly flash up on the screen now other symbology for various emitters. The SA-6 has a circle around it. That means that this emitter is actually tracking us. So this is searching because it doesn't have a circle. This is searching because it doesn't have a circle. This is tracking us because it has a circle. Also, you can hear an occasional warning and an indication that our primary threat tracking us is a SAM. If it was the plane, it would be AI, air intercept. The azimuth of the emitter is, of course, shown from our own ship symbol here. SC6 out there, Moskva out there, flanker ahead. Also, the distance is roughly conveyed in terms of its distance from us to the symbol. Though that is only rough because it's calculated on signal strength, which can be unreliable. But roughly, it's showing the SA6 is closest, then the Slava cruiser, then the flanker. Next, we will run the sim through so you can see what happens when someone fires at us. I expect the uh, SA-6 is going to fire at us first. Okay, that's the warning to say that a missile has been fired. And if we press F6, we can see that indeed a missile has been fired. Don't worry, viewers, I saw fit to make us invincible. That shows the RWR in its current state. The only thing now is to actually show firing some chaff and flare. So I think I'll start with a manual deployment only. So manual. I'm going to do it from the front cockpit. Manual dispense one. That was one press of the button and that was the manual dispense program one and manual dispense program two. That's the extent of the twos at the time of making this video. I hope that was useful and see you later.